Sean Crabtree with the Lake Cumberland District Health Department joins us now live to talk about this outreach. Sean, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I always look forward to the opportunity to spread the public health message. How did you get the idea to do this to, on YouTube? And I know you do other things as well, but let's talk about YouTube. Where did that come from? Well, we have a YouTube channel, and uh, we've used it to do various public health promotions through the years. But you know, very early on in our COVID-19 strategy, we decided that uh, if we provided our local citizens with good local data, that uh, it would give them the opportunity to make uh, informed decisions uh, based on things that's happening in their own area. Uh what kind of response have you been getting? Well, we have uh, quite a few people that watch our uh, YouTube program. We have a lot of following uh, locally uh, on our Facebook page. So, uh, we, you know, we get a pretty good interaction. You uh, also, from, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fine. Go ahead. You also publish daily updates on your website. How is that going? Well, it goes well. We have a, a good number of people that read that each day, and uh, it, it gets the gets the information out there. I'm, I'm afraid we've we've been dealing with COVID-19 so long now that uh, a good number of people have sort of tuned out and uh, or have been inundated with federal and state and local data and, and may not pay as much attention as, as we would hope they uh, would. Real quickly, let's have you name the counties uh, that you serve so we our viewers know kind of where you're coming from. We're the 10 County Lake Cumberland District, Adair, Casey, Clinton, Cumberland, Green, McQuarrie, Pulaski, Russell, Taylor, and Wayne. And how many of those are in the red zone? Well, as of today, or as of last night, I've not ran the figures for today. We were at seven of our 10 counties in the red critical range of community spread. That's averaging 25 new cases per day for 100,000. So as we're certainly not in the place we'd like to be at this point. Sure. From what you see and hear in those communities, why are cases going up, at least where you serve uh, the community? I think there's a couple of factors. You know, one, we just began uh, in-person instruction back in the schools a few weeks ago, and uh, that could be contributing to it, having a lot more social interaction in the schools. Um, while the disease might not show up in the kids, since they tend to be asymptomatic or not show symptoms, it still may be spreading taking it at home to the parents and grandparents and they take it to work or church or wherever they go. That combined with the fact that people are just uh, kind of burnt out on COVID-19, they, they want it to be over. Unfortunately, COVID-19 is not finished with us. Today will be our uh, highest count of new cases since the uh, onset of the outbreak. And the last time we set a record, it was, uh, we had 75 uh, cases tonight we'll be reporting 76 but when we had 75 uh, it was augmented by three nursing home clusters we don't have nursing home clusters augmenting our numbers tonight it's simply widespread community spread so we're in the most difficult position we've been in since march since this began the governor has during his briefings that we carry live here on wkyt uh, on uh, this station has been pleading and begging for people to wear their masks to social distance. What are you seeing? Well, I, I agree with that. We know absolutely without a doubt, looking at instances that have happened in our district, uh, in churches, in factories, in businesses, when, when those places are careful in uh, following the guidance, a case may uh, present themselves at one of these places, but it doesn't turn into a large cluster. Uh, but in places that are lax, those tend to turn into the large clusters. So we know that the social distancing, without a shadow of a doubt, based on local information, the social distancing and the masking will work. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a challenge. How do you keep people from being fatigued with this? Because I think all of us are fatigued, at least some, uh, you know, we're, what, seven months plus into this, and it's been a long haul already, and I think people thought by now we'd have this thing at least go in the other direction instead of worse. Well, I think for, for us, looking at our mortality rate, we have, just in Lake Cumberland, uh, since the onset, we've had about one out of every 50 people pass away. We've had about one of every four or five people end up in the hospital. And since we're averaging more than 50 cases a day now, that means one new person, one new death average per day and, and you know, three to four new hospitalizations a day. Uh, hopefully the local people hearing that, it will inspire them to you know, do the things that, that they need to do to 
to uh, reduce their risk and to lower the spread, which is wearing your masks, uh, keeping your social distance, trying to avoid crowds, uh, washing your hands, those things that's, that you've been hearing. And, you know, these concepts are not new concepts. I mean, if you if you think about biblical times 4,000 years ago when in the Old Testament, when God gave Moses the law, there was a, a leprosy, which is a communicable mm-hmm. skin disease, and, and isolation and quarantine was introduced then. So this, these are not new concepts. These have been around since biblical times, uh, quarantining or social distancing, uh, staying away from people when you're contagious. Well, thank you for that reminder. I haven't heard it quite put like that, but that makes a lot of sense. Sean Crabtree with the Lake Cumberland District Health Department. Good luck, and let's hope the, the state, the people in the state, turn this around. Well, thank you, and thank you for having me. Thank you, Sean.